Hello everyone. Here's another grammar video for you. In this video, let's talk about question tags. Shall we? What are question tags? Question tags are short questions that usually come at the end of these statements. Have a look at these statements. Jack is from Spain. Mary can speak English. Now what do you find at the end of these statements? Jack is from Spain and Mary can speak English. You find isn't he and can't she. What are these? These are the short questions called question tags. And they always begin with an auxiliary verb or a modal verb followed by a subject pronoun. So children, if you know to find the auxiliary verb and a pronoun from a sentence, you can easily frame a question tag. Why do we use question tags at the end of the statements? What is the purpose of using it? Is that necessary? Yes. In order to confirm the given statement is true or not, or to encourage a reply from the person to whom we are speaking, whether he or she agrees or disagrees with our statement, we use question tags at the end of these statements. Look at the examples given. The meeting is at 10 o'clock, isn't it? So here, you just confirm whether the meeting is at 10 o'clock. Look at the other examples. It's a beautiful car, isn't it? Jim and Jack do not work hard, do they? So here, you want the listener to agree or disagree with your statements. Thereby, question tags are used at the end of these statements. There are some set of rules where you need to follow while framing a question tag. First rule, if the given statement is positive, it takes the negative question tag. Check out this example. Arun is playing football. Now observe, the given statement is positive or negative? Yes, it's a positive statement. So we have to frame a negative question tag. How will you frame? First, check for the auxiliary verb in the given sentence. Yes, you find the auxiliary verb is. So place the auxiliary verb is at the beginning of the question tag. Then we know the given statement is positive. So, we should write the contracted form of not, that is, int. After this, we have to write the appropriate pronoun. To find out the pronoun, you should look at the subject. If the subject is a noun that denotes a masculine gender, we can use the pronoun he. If it is a feminine gender, we can use the pronoun she. So, here in the given example, the subject is Arun that denotes a masculine gender. So, we have to use the pronoun he. And finally, you can end up the question tag with a question mark. Look at another example. Rohan can drive car. So, here we find the model verb can. And you also find the sentence to be a positive one. So, we need to add not. Now, what is a contracted form of cannot? is can't and followed by the subject pronoun which is supposed to be he and end up with a question mark. Next rule, if the statement is negative, it takes the positive question tag. Look at this example, Govind is not a lawyer. So on seeing the word not, you come to know the sentence to be a negative one. So, we have to frame a positive question tag. So, how will we form? First, bring out the auxiliary verb. It is is. And since the statement is negative, you need not add end to the question tag. So, now we can go for the pronoun. Look at the subject children. It is go in. So, what is the correct subject pronoun instead of this noun go in? Yes, you have to use he. And finally, end up with a question mark. Look at another example. So here you find the do verb, do. And followed by the pronoun and end up with a question mark. One more example. 
girls hadn't decorated the stage. So here again, look for the auxiliary verb. Yes, you have the auxiliary verb had. You bring the auxiliary verb and followed by the pronoun. So here you find the subject girls. It is in plural form. So you have to write the plural pronoun they. Had, they followed by the question mark. Students, you may get some statements where you don't find the auxiliary verbs. In such cases, what will you do? You have to look for the main verb in the statement and find out its tense. If it is in simple present tense, we can form question tag with do form verbs, do or does, depending upon the subject's singularity or plurality. Now look at this example given, Anu likes coffee. So here in this statement, you don't find any auxiliary verb. So check for the main verb. Yes, it is likes, which is in simple present tense. Okay, since it's in simple present tense, we have to use do or does. So according to this sentence, we can use the do form verb does. Why? Because subject Anu is singular. So the singular subject will take a singular verb. So we have to use the auxiliary verb does. And you know the statement is a positive one. So we have to introduce the negative word not in the contracted form. Then end up with a subject pronoun she. And finally end up with a question mark. Have a look at another example. They play cricket. So here again you don't find any auxiliary verb. So you go for the main verb. It is play and you find to be in simple present tense. So now we have to use do or does children. Yes, you have to use the auxiliary verb do. Why? Because the subject is in plural form. So plural subject will take a plural verb. So we have to use the auxiliary verb do. And again the sentence to be a positive one. So we have taken the negative word end. And finally, end up with the subject pronoun and question mark. Next rule is again a sentence without auxiliary verb. If there is no auxiliary verb in a sentence, you can go and check for the main verb. And if you find the main verb to be in simple past tense, we have to use the do form verb did in the question tag. Look at this example children. They went to the cinema. So in this sentence, there is no auxiliary verb. So we can check for the main verb. What is the main verb here? Went. So went is the main verb which is in simple past tense. So if you find the sentence to be in past tense with no auxiliary verb, we have to use the do form verb did to frame a question tag. And as a sentence is in positive, we have used the contracted form of not end followed by the subject pronoun they. Look at another example. She studied in New Zealand. Here again, there is no auxiliary verb. So you can check for the main verb. So here, what is the main verb? Studied, which is in the simple past tense. So if you find the sentence to be in past tense without any auxiliary verb, we have to use the do form verb did in the question tag and as a sentence is a positive sentence we have again used the contracted form of not and followed by the subject pronoun she. Next rule when the statement contains a word with a negative meaning the question tag needs to be a positive one. Observe this example he hardly ever speaks. In this statement, there is a word hardly that gives a negative meaning, not much. He will not speak much. As a sentence is a negative one, the following question tag should be a positive tag. So what is the question tag here? Does he. Why we have used does here children? Because the sentence does not possess any auxiliary verb. So you can go for the main verb. What is the main verb here? Speaks, which is in simple present tense. Also, 
the subject is a singular form. So we have used the do form verb das followed by the subject pronoun he. Coming to another example, they rarely eat in restaurants. So here in this sentence, you have a word rarely that gives a negative meaning, not often. They will not eat in restaurants often. So the following question tag should be a positive one. So what is the question tag? Do they? So why we have used do here? The sentence does not possess any auxiliary verb. So you go check for the main verb eat, which is in simple present tense. And also check the subject. Subject is in plural form. If the subject is plural form, we have to use the do form verb do, followed by the subject pronoun they. Coming to the next rule, if the sentence starts with let, the auxiliary verb shall is used in the question tag. Look at the example. Let me read it for you. So this statement starts with the word let. So how will you frame the question tag? We have to frame the question tag using the auxiliary verb shall followed by the pronoun. So how can we use this pronoun hi children? For that, you have to look for the subject in the given sentence. So what is the subject here? Me. The subject me in the given sentence changes as the subject pronoun in the question tag. Look at another example. Let us take the next bus. So here again, the sentence starts with the word let. So we have to frame the question tag using the auxiliary verb shall followed by the pronoun we. So how did you get this uh, pronoun we children? On seeing the subject as from the given sentence. Next rule, for an affirmative imperative sentence, that is, for a positive imperative sentence, we can use either will you or won't you as the question tag. Example, open the window. Open the window is an imperative sentence which is in positive form. So we can use the question tag will you or won't you. Here, how do you get the subject pronoun you in the question tag children? You need to remember that the subject hidden in the imperative sentence is always you and so the subject pronoun in the question tag is also you. One more example, kindly take a seat. So kindly take a seat is an imperative sentence which is in positive state. So we can use the question tag will you or won't you. Last example, please give me the documents. So this is a polite request, an imperative form in a positive state. So we can use won't you or will you as the question tag. Next rule. For the negative imperative sentence, we can use will you as the question tag. Example, don't touch the wire. Don't touch the wire is an imperative sentence that gives the warning not to touch the wire. So, we can use will you as the question tag. Another example, don't litter here. Don't litter here is again an imperative sentence that gives a warning not to make the place untidy. Thereby, we have used will you as the question tag. So, here again you remember children, the subject hidden in the imperative sentence is always you. And so the subject pronoun of the question tag is also you. So my dear students, I hope you all have understood the uses and the rules of the question tags. Thank you.